You see, again and again we make ourselves poor with our thinking. We tell ourselves, things should be different. How could they, how could they be different? I missed my opportunity. How could they be different? I should have always managed everything. That's the only way things would be different. So we've learned over time from criticism from parents, from words spoken from all sorts of people, perhaps a school teacher who said, no more of your funny questions. A school teacher who said, look, get out of my class, smart one. That put down often shamed a brilliant student. He turned to drugs or she turned to drugs and antisocial behaviour because of a remark like that. I should have always managed everything. Get the first letters. S-H-A-M-E. Shame. And we go into hiding and despair. It's tragic. We don't see the light. We're not looking for it. We hide from it like somebody born in a cave who's never seen the light. But we can come out and live in the light. That's what Jesus said. But often we don't come out of the cave because of fear. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. And if you look at those words, false evidence appearing real, A-L. E V I. You'll spell lies in those words if you write them one under the other. Lies we tell ourselves keep us in fear. We have to challenge those lies. Challenge them as Jesus challenged the social niceties of the age, the social correctness of the age. We have to challenge them. Yes, we challenge them. Because there's grace. Australians are not very religious. Australia was born out of a shipload of convicts and soldiers, not very good nation building material. In fact, in the 1850s, when Darwin visited Australia, he said, Hopeless. I see a humanity that doesn't fit into the concept of evolution. It's going downward, it's hopeless. But God's grace was there from Methodist local preachers, from priests who tried to be faithful, from clergy who were pushed into things they didn't want to be, such as magistrates. And the convicts said, I'll go to no church to see a white shirt on a preacher. I'll swear on no book to the hurt of my poor fellow creature. And so Australian mateship was born. But mateship didn't involve the Aborigines. No. Convicts were beaten for stealing bread. Aborigines could spear a cow and not be punished under Philip and later governors. And so the, con the Aborigines were the funny people and poked fun at if you look at Australian art, early Australian art. Mateship didn't involve the Aborigines. It's taken us a long time till we've given them vote, a long time after our nationhood and centenary of our commonwealth. But God's grace is there. The Australian bush speaks of grace. Bushfire goes through country. Rain falls. It's renewed and restored. We think species may have become extinct, but we discover one now and again, a new species we can bring back to life. Grace. Grace. Drought comes destructively. Rain falls, restoration and renewal. What a beautiful picture of grace that every Australian sees again and again. Grace as our bodies heal as we recover from sickness. Grace pervades all creation, if only we noticed it. Perhaps it's like entropy. Things swing backwards and forwards if we see them on camera, like playing a camera backwards. Nature repairs itself. Grace. By God's grace, every one of us who's caught in fear can stop. S-T-O-P. Stop. 
What's it stand for? Stop. Think. Option. Preference. Well, you can give yourself a star. S-T-A-R. Stop. Think. Alternate. Response. The Healing of Shame needs to be followed through in our new HOPE program. It's a program, 12-step program, and uh, many versions of the 12 steps there. It's been built out of much experience and the experience of groups over 15 years. And the purpose of the New Hope program is to educate and re-educate. Stop, think, alternate response. Educate and re-educate to put in place new learning in place of old dysfunctional thinking and behaviour. To put in place new learning in place of old dysfunctional thinking and behaviour. And then there's a sentence. The thinking and behaviour that allowed your problem to grow is unlikely to be able to fix or solve your problem. How often have we tried to think and to solve and to fix new problems with old thinking. And this is new elements in that thinking. Keep doing what you've always done, you'll get what you always got. To expect a different result from the same thinking and behaviour. Some people tell us that's the mark of insanity. And we can be caught in that insanity so easily, thinking we're the wisest people in the world. But when we begin to change our thinking, we'll learn new social skills. Social skills are essential. People have social skills. Social skills to drive cars, social skills to meet in the marketplace but how we lack social skills in family life, how we lack social skills in the marital situation, the family situation. Quite often the skills we bring to that situation are anger, aggression, submission or retreat. Give in to dad because it's hopeless to argue against him. Give in to mum, she's the authority. Submit. Give in to boyfriends or girlfriends. How many young people have gotten themselves into trouble in sexual situations because all they knew how to do was to submit? And to submit isn't to consent. How many people in criminal situations have submitted to someone else's ideas and somebody else's dreams and somebody else's purpose and somebody else's propaganda? They would submit, not consent. They didn't even have strength within themselves to retreat or hide or run away. They wanted to be liked. They wanted to be accepted. They had no option but to go with the flow. How tragic. If we're ashamed, we'll submit or retreat. Go with the flow. And it'll get us into much trouble. You see, when we learn to be assertive, stop, wait, Think, I would like, and express your worthwhileness with a new question or demand or understanding. You'll help your neighbours grow also. Grace. It's everywhere through nature. We see it everywhere in Australia and across the world. The world flowed together to help heal after the great tsunami in the North Pacific and North Indian Ocean. Helping nature heal, helping our fellows heal. Grace, acts of grace everywhere. If we accept that grace personally and can forgive ourselves for the situation we've been in, forgive ourselves for saying yes when we meant no, Forgive ourselves for staying in uncomfortable situations for so long. 
forgive ourselves for what we didn't really cause and blame, but we'd been blaming ourselves for it for all along. A little girl, she came to my office the other day. And when she explained her story, she hadn't responded to therapy. When she explained her story, she'd been called that little bastard. Your father ran away soon after you were conceived. Might have stayed around a year or two after. But I was left here with you, with you and I didn't want you. She was told it all the time. As a little girl playing happily with her friends, one day she fell over in the park. And an old man comforted her. But he didn't let her run off happily until he'd taken her pants off and played with her. She didn't tell her mum. She couldn't tell her mum. She was too shamed. She was too shocked. And she lived with that memory. Her behaviour began to deteriorate. She became increasingly antisocial. Became increasingly promiscuous. And after all, any trouble she got into as a young adult was her fault. So shamed she couldn't even ask for help. But we were able to help her understand she could forgive herself. None of it was her fault. Forgive herself. She could learn to affirm the good points about herself. She was a kind, considerate person, a loving person, helped so many, and wondered why people didn't help her. She could affirm her worthiness. And she would need her to know that that was essential, essential to forgive herself, essential to affirm her worthiness and re-educate herself, essential to re-educate herself, to change her thinking. If she would re-educate herself, she'd be reconstructing herself by help, help of the so with the sources of help. And she could re-parent herself, yes, be a new parent to herself. She was now an adult. And she parented her children, she could re-parent herself and be a better parent to her children. And she could re-educate herself. F-E-A-R. Forgive self. It's essential. Assert your wiser self. Affirm your wiser self. Re-educate. And re-parent yourself. If you can do that for yourself you'll find new power, personal power, new dignity. You'll find empowerment and enthusiasm for living. What a beautiful thought. If you've been powerless all your life, have power and enthusiasm for living. So different to depression. So different to depression. Yes, and if you find power, you'll be able to manage yourself differently. Manage yourself with a new understanding. Yes. If you've got power, you can make decisions and say no and yes at appropriate time. If you've got sufficient power, you'll be coming increasingly mature. You won't be the powerless person pushed around. You'll not only be getting older, you'll be more empowered and more mature making better decisions with new understanding. The little frightened self will no longer take control of the adult that you are. How often does a moment of panic really mean that the little frightened child inside you is shaking you and urging you to run or to rage? No, the adult that is you will be able with maturity to say, Little brother inside, don't be afraid. We can handle this together. And the memories of the past and the present and the new learning will become one and you'll become an integrated whole person. And so as you learn maturity, you'll be able to learn about your authenticity, your uniqueness, your specialness, your fingerprints are unique. Not only your fingerprints are unique, but your interpretation of events growing up are unique. Your learning about the world is unique. Yourself you are unique. You're special. God's special child. And God doesn't make junk, some people learn. No, he doesn't. You're special. 
learn about your authenticity and become aware of your authenticity, your uniqueness. It was loss of authenticity that drove you into shame and despair and hopelessness. Own that authenticity. But look at your humanity, your humanness. Yes, your humanness to be kind, caring, loving. Yes, you're so proud of that. You help so many people, but you haven't helped yourself. You love so many people, but you haven't loved yourself. You're human and you need love. Without love of self, none of us can be truly human. We need a healthy self-love. We're human and need to love ourselves appropriately. That love is a choice. We choose to love ourselves. And so, if we're human, we'll be humble enough to ask for help and to receive help and to find intimacy and closeness with other people, be able to listen to other people and understand them and be understood ourselves. And that word shame needs an S on top of it. Some people say it means saved. If you've got self-esteem, humility, authenticity and awareness, maturity and self-management, and you're empowered. That destructive shame has been like the boomerang. The boomerang that kept coming back in the old way of life, the painful boomerang that knocked you down, that hit you on the head, you wondered why you didn't learn from it. Finally, its powerful work is done. Its positive work is done. And you've been renewed and you've found God's blessing for you and hope. You found peace, serenity, well-being. And you can stand tall and you can say, my name is Bill and Fred or Annie or Jane or Jenny, whoever you are, you can introduce yourself with a new understanding. That's where groups come in. They give you the encouragement that's necessary in hope. You change with hope. Hope, hope. Hope isn't to win the lottery. Hope isn't for a fairy godmother to save you. Hope's more practical than that. Healing your past hurts. Open sharing, talking about it. Healing, open sharing, prayer reflection and encouragement. As we look at that encouragement, it's so essential. We find that in group life. And the experience of the new Hope Awareness Program will offer you encouragement and you'll find a new way of living and know you're a worthwhile person deserving of pride you're loved and accepted by people who know you as you are friendship with yourself and other people's essential god loves you you have permission to love yourself and you won't be afraid anymore you'll be a mature person a mature person is one who's able to make a variety of responses no more reaction. How often has your behaviour been dictated by your reaction to this or that or another word, another situation? Stop, think, option, preference, respond. And as you can respond and not react, you'll find new and good things happening to you. Yes, a mature person's one who's able to make response to given stimuli or situations, being aware that a number of responses are possible in the face of any stimuli. A mature person is able to make that response that seems to be most appropriate or of greater benefit to self and others. The mature person is not afraid to make changes in his or her life that will bring a better outcome for you and your family. Your growing health is contagious. Learn about it. Get well yourself. Don't ask how you'll fix other people. Get well yourself. And growing health is contagious. If you're different, other people won't remain the same. Learn how to be different. Get in touch with our New Hope Awareness Program. You may be able to get material to start one where you are or with a family friend or a friend. And the future will be new for you as it has been for many others 
who have tested this program. Thank you.